Greetings and welcome, academic proletariat of U.S. history, to the short edition of the Fireside Chats with Mr. Olson, where we will be doing a favor for students and teachers alike and helping make sure that nobody mixes up the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence again. So our topic today is going to be that Declaration of Independence, the middle of the road, Articles of, Re of Confederation, and the Constitution. So here we go. I uh, just want to let you know, I don't want you to be that student, okay? I don't want you to be the student that says, as stated in the Declaration of Independence, we, the people of the United States. The United States weren't thing when the Declaration of Independence was written and signed. I also don't want you to be the student that says, as stated in the Constitution, all men are created equal. No and no. Okay, so we're talking about two different historical contexts here. Um, really, the revolution with the critical period thrown uh, in the middle of it, and then uh, the early republic. I realize that that's three, but basically we're talking about the revolution and the critical period. The early republic stuff is kind of an afterthought. Okay, let's start with the Declaration of Independence. The historical context of the Declaration of Independence, of course, is going to be the American Revolution, okay? The end of salutary neglect, the Stamp Act, Boston Tea Party, Intolerable Acts, all those wonderful things that lead up to the Revolutionary War. Okay, I would argue that the Revolution and the Revolutionary War are not the same thing. We, we can debate that for hours and hours. Um, I just want to say that the, that the historical context of the Declaration of Independence being signed is all those events that lead up uh, to its evolution. The purpose of it, of course, is to inform England of America's intent to establish an independent country. In, order, in other words, break away from England. It's not a... Uh, outline or a framing of a government. It's to tell Britain we're done. Okay, the audience, of course, is the King of England and Parliament, those people that had been holding the colonies in bondage. The point of view or the author is, of course, Thomas Je Jefferson, and he received some help from other people who were in the Second Continental Congress. But I want to emphasize the fact that here's a, a, a affluent white colonist and member of the Second Continental Congress, so he is somebody who is sort of a part of this revolutionary fervor, so we shouldn't see it as a surprise that he wrote the document. Okay, the Declaration of Independence is organized like this. It's got a preamble, and then for the most part, it's got a list of grievances, which most start he has, he being the king, something that he did wrong, and then finally it ra wraps up with a statement of independence. Uh, much like the Constitution has a pre preamble, but that's like it, other than the fact that it's written by rich white dudes. Okay, that's like it. Okay, so we can't get him confused confused. Important parts of the, the Declaration of Independence are all men are created equal, and then of course the, the sentence that talks about nat natural rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and it also talks about whenever any form of government becomes destructive, the people have the right to abolish it. Okay, so the accomplishments of the Declaration of Independence are clearly identifying and defining the idea of natural rights and establishing the idea that the government uh, gets its power from the consent of the governed. The pitfalls of the Declaration of Independence are, of course, it did nothing to get rid of the struggle for blacks uh, or slaves. It did nothing, uh, and in fact, arguably could be seen as a setback for women, and of course, did nothing for Native Americans. In fact, it's probably a setback for them because it brings the colonists together. Okay, Once independence is declared, we have a war. Once the war is over... America wins, we need to figure out what to do with regard to a, a government, and that's where the Articles of Confederation come in. Historical context here is, of course, like I just said, the American Revolution and uh, the colonial victory in the war, and the need to establish this new government. Now, just a disclaimer here, the Articles of Confederation were actually set up before the war ended. They were the government that actually got the colonists through the war. Um, however, they're created in the shadow of Britain's rule, so it's going to be very reactive to the things that Britain did prior to the Revolutionary War that pissed the colonists off. Okay, the purpose was to create a government, stabilize the, 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 the land, sort of get the feet under themselves. The audience is, of course, American citizens and then those who are going to become involved in the government. This is very important. The College Board loves to talk about this. The strengths of the Articles of Confederation were, of course, the fact that it wins the war for the colonists. It organized Western land uh, with most notably the Northwest Ordinance, which if you're not 100% sure what that is, go look it up. This is not the time or place. And then finally, it establishes foreign re relations procedures. And then had to, of course, because it won the war. Therefore, it's the... Uh, body of government that's going to see through the Treaty of Versailles, I'm sorry, the Tre Treaty of Paris, that is uh, going to end 
uh, the Re Revolutionary War. Weaknesses are something that the college board loves to hit on. It had no power to tax, which means it couldn't raise money, which means it couldn't do anything. It had no power to regulate trade. It was hard to pass laws, near, nearly impossible to amend them, seeing as though it needed to be unanimous. It had a unicameral, unicameral Congress, meaning there was no executive branch, no judicial branch. Okay? The issues of the Articles of Confederation come up all the time. I just want to emphasize that. Now, that brings us to the Constitution. Hopefully, you realize from, from that uh, this short discussion on the Articles of Confederation that they didn't work. So, the historical context, of course, of the Constitution are failure of the Articles and Shays' Rebellion, which is the culmination of the failures of these Articles. If you're not 100% sure what Shays' Rebellion is, go look it up. Okay, now the purpose of the Constitution is to establish a new procedure for government, one that deviates away from the Articles. Now, they had initially met with the intention of just amending the Articles, and they quickly realized that that wasn't going to happen. So they closed up all the windows, closed up all the doors, stuck themselves in a smelly old room in the middle of July in the heat, and drew up a Constitution. Members of the Convention, this is something that's important to keep in mind so you know where the American government came from. Well, it came from a bunch of, most, a bunch of rich white guys, no small farmers invited, no women invited, no minorities invited. Shocker. And that gives you a snapshot of America and the Constitution under which we live right now. Now you know why William Lloyd Garrison burned it. If you don't know who he is, go look him up. Okay, the Constitution is organized like this. There's a preamble, much like the Declaration of Independence. However, this preamble starts, we the people of the United States, because they are establishing a government for the United States, which is now a thing. There are then seven articles. The first three are the most important. They set up the three branches of government uh, that are essential for you to know. And overall, the importance of the Constitution is that it was intentionally vague to allow for changes over time and also directly addressed most of the issues of the Articles. For example, remember how the Articles didn't give uh, Congress the power to tax? Well, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution does that. Um, allows um, When it outlines all the powers of co Congress, raising taxes is one of them. Okay, and then uh, finally... The Constitution set off an intense debate between Federalists and Anti-Federalists who were mostly arguing over the lack of a Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights was eventually put in in 1791 after a long heated debate that, and the Constitution is ratified owing largely to the introduction of the Federalist Papers by uh, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. So in a nutshell, those are the three initial important do documents in American, in, in American history. Please don't mix them up. Power to the people. I'm out.